got to get to work now. It is a hot summer day and it looks like it's about to rain. Yeah, 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 yeah. My, my green light, guys, not yours. Yeah, that's a red light for them. All right, well. You look at this, look at this. This is rush hour traffic, five o'clock. All this traffic is going north up to the West Lake area, which I am just leaving. Everybody in West Lake owns a car because they have to so they can show off to their friends how rich they are. This, what you see, was not that way when I first came to Vietnam 11 years ago. It was by volume, traffic volume, 70% bikes by volume. Now it's like 70% cars and it makes the traffic terrible. Oh well, but we can still go faster than the cars because we can lane split. Yes, lane splitting, or also known as driving in Vietnam. Anyways, I've been down that road before. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. What can I tell you today? Ah, let's talk about traffic speed. One of the things you need to know is that although technically there may be speed limits, <sighs> practically, I don't, most people don't even know what they are. I don't know, how often do I see speed limit signs on the road? Although you can get pulled over for speeding. The cops have a little speed traps with the camera they print off and give to you and it has your speed and your vehicle and they'll nail you dead to rights but as of yet knock on wood knock on wood uh, I have not yet gotten pulled over for speeding and they tend to catch you on major roads like this this guy in front of me is looking at his phone. He's texting while he's driving. See that? Very, very, very safe. Yes, yes. We'll, we'll talk more about that later. Um, where was I? Yes, about speed limits. But you basically, you go as fast as the road and traffic conditions allow. Now, there's a number of factors that constrain your speed. For example, like this bus, vehicles that come in from the sides, or like intersections where vehicles come from one, the right or the left side. Now the reason that will slow you down is not necessarily because you will have vehicles going through it, but it's the threat of vehicles going through it. If you're going on a big road like this, and you got an opening, you might be tempted to go really fast. However, somebody will just pull out and like this black car, the Mercedes. And cars and bikes tend to not look when they come out from the side. They just pull out and they expect you to slow down. I'm not kidding. So when you go through on a wide road, like this lady right here running the red light, and you got cross traffic, or should I say intersections, places where people can come in from the side, you can't go very fast be because somebody could pop out at any moment and not stop and not slow down and not look. So that is one of the, one of the constraints that will slow you down and reduce your speed. So you need to be driving in a way that you can, when you have those side streets coming in, where you can hit the brakes and slow down at any time because that might be necessary. <clears throat> Another one of the constraints is just traffic. As you can see, if you've got a lot of vehicles in your way, wow, tourists, what an unusual sight. You cannot go very fast just because there's too many vehicles in the way. 
and uh, they might just be very crowded, or it might be that they're just kind of randomly placed over the road, so you can't go fast. That's another thing that can constrain your speed. A third one is road conditions. If the road's very rough or it's got potholes. And then, um, what else? A fourth one is the size, narrowness of the road. And is it straight or not? Is it curvy? Is there blind turns? So yeah, the straightness or the size of the road itself. These are the things that can constrain your speed. So what does that mean? Well, if you can get on a divided road where there aren't really any side streets that open up to the road and there aren't a lot of vehicles and there aren't, you know, there, there aren't, uh, the road is smooth, wide, straight, then you can go quite fast. <clears throat> I'm not going to tell you how fast you can go, but uh, I'll just say it was very fast. And that also provided that there's not a speeding trap. But with these other factors, like this guy going the wrong way, thank you, sir. These other factors constrain how you go, how with the speed you can go. So the speed limits, practically speaking, don't exist, but they kind of do, because you can only really go as fast as the traffic and the road conditions allow you to go. Uh, beyond which, technically, maybe you could go faster, but it's just too dangerous. <clears throat> All right, a little bit of lane splitting. Oh, no, come on, guys. <sighs> nope. It's uh, pretty hot today, and luckily it's cooling off a bit, but it's still very, very humid. There's, it's cloudy, humid, and it feels like we're about to have a big rainstorm. And that may be the case. Oh. August, super hot, except for we get rain. And uh, you kind of, I kind of like it when it rains because it cools everything off, as I may have said before. And I think it's very cute. It's very, very cute for me uh, when I hear American motorcyclists go, well, I don't drive, I don't ride my motorcycle in the rain. I mean, that's like in Vietnam. To say you don't ride on two wheels in the rain when it, when it might rain is like saying, I don't like to breathe when it's daylight. You know, it's like, well, you, you, you're going to have to breathe when it's daylight. You can't, you can't inhale and exhale exclusively at night. It's just not feasible because tropical, wet climate, monsoon season, and then the spring rains in February and March, it's always raining. And, uh, you know, you don't have a lot of other options unless you want to go by taxi or grab. Hello. Just got off the, out of the office, I suppose. I'm going to the office. Uh, a few hours ago, I was uh, riding my dirt bike, and I was all suited up in, uh, you know, the motocross pants, boots, shirt, full pads, chest, back, elbows, knees, the whole nine yards. And uh, that's why I'm wearing my motocross helmet today. But I was out at about three. It was just on my dirt bike at the track. And it was so ridiculously hot. Luckily, I brought an entire other change of clothes because there was no way I was going to ride this cruiser 
again in traffic in my motocross outfit. Uh-uh. Hot and uncomfortable. Although I would be <clears throat> much better protected, to be honest. Can I go? Yes, I can. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, that was a little too fast. Speaking of road conditions. Yeah, okay, now, because I've got this traffic shooting through, I gotta slow down. Technically, we have the right of way, but there's a difference between, there's a big difference between what is technical and what is practical? Like here, I have to slow down that intersection. People, people will scoot through it all the time. So technically, I have the right of way, but practically, that may not be the case. This is a good road. You see, you can't. They got barriers because otherwise, people would be weaving all over the place. It's there's no road to the side. I could go fast here, but. The traffic conditions do not permit it. The road conditions are great, but the traffic conditions do not permit me going above 60 Ks. So that's a practical example right there of how for a brief moment I could go really fast and then because of cross streets or because of traffic, I couldn't go fast. Practical speed limit. Technical speed limits, well, no, it's more about the practical speed limit. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, I was down at the track. Formation flung. These guys have to talk to each other and slow traffic down. Thank you. Um, getting, a little, getting a little practice, and I still need to do some work on the dirt bike. Uh, I think I need to replace some bearings. I uh, need to readjust my rear suspension. The rebound's a bit too jumpy. Uh, there's some simple stuff and some not-so-simple stuff. Uh, it's... It, I didn't do any big jumps. I might even put in some B-roll footage of that track here, but I didn't do any jumps because, well, I did jumps, but nothing too big because I just don't didn't trust the bike. It was not real going very straight and true. It was kind of kicking to the side. So I babied it. I babied it. And uh, in October of last year, I cracked a bone in my wrist doing a jump, a tabletop jump, and that hurt like crazy. How can such a small bone hurt so bad? Uh, the, the night after, the night after, I was just in so much pain. But anyways, so since I've cracked my bone, I've been, wrist bone, I've been more cautious about jumps at, at like motocross jumps. Um, and besides, I tend to prefer enduro riding trails, and you don't really need to do a lot of big jumps on trails. Wheelies and small jumps are one thing, but you don't do a lot of massive air on trail riding. All right, well, I'm about to get to work, and uh, so yeah, I just wanted to have a little talk about what is the technical versus the practical speed limit, and I hope that's helpful for you. And I'll be back with other moto vlogs, list videos, and other things related to motorcycling in Vietnam. And uh, remember, pay attention out there because chances are nobody else is. <laughs>